In this series of videos, I want to talk about why minus 163 is a cool number, and also 23, um, numbers that would be instantly recognizable to um, certain mathematicians. Um, and the subtitle is a little bit about algebraic number theory. Uh, there's absolutely no claim to originality in this. Um, I uh, attended some lectures by David Pollock of Wesleyan University a few years ago, and I thought that um, his approach to things was very, uh, very good. And so I'm uh, following, roughly following his presentation. Um, he said a lot more than what I'm going to say. So here's the question. It's a very natural question. Which integers can be written as the sum of two squares? Uh, so I'm going to pick an integer n, and I'm going to ask, can it be written as x squared plus y squared, where x and y are also integers? So we're very, very um, classic number theory problem. Um, we can actually generalize it, and it's going to be particularly interesting to generalize it. Given some fixed other integer d, which integers can be written in the form of x squared plus dy squared? So x squared plus 5y squared, or x squared plus 17y squared, or x squared minus y squared. And we're going to look at some versions of that problem. Um, so let's look at the first one version is going to be a really easy version, where d equals 0. OK, why not? Um, if That's just going to be n equals x squared. Um, so it's just all things that are perfect squares. It's a simple answer. Um, although if I just give you a 23-digit number n, you might actually have a hard time figuring out if it's a perfect square or not, unless you have a calculator. But suppose that you're allowed to ask me the prime factorization of n then it's very easy. You just figure out if all the primes are, are raised to even exponents. Okay, And that's a hint of how important factorization and primes are going to be in the rest of this. Okay, So that's really a very much a toy case. d equals 1 is already a very classic, wonderful problem. So we're, go, we're back to the original problem. Some number, I want to know if it's the sum of two squares. Um, let me just say a couple things about it relate, that it relates to um, before I actually want to move away to another kind of toy problem. Um, I want to mention that it obviously relates to Pythagoras. If this also happens, if n also happens to be a square, then we're taught looking for Pythagorean triples, which is a really famous, well-known problem. Um, and Pythagoras is, of course, really a geometry statement. So maybe there's a relationship to two-dimensional geometry here. And we'll see that there's a very cool relationship to two-dimensional geometry in algebra. But as a warm-up for this problem, which is going to take up a lot of um, the time in these videos, we're going to go to um, a different problem, which is where d equals minus 1. So in other words, we're looking at uh, some given number, and we're just asking, can it be written as a difference of two squares? OK. Hmm. OK. Well, let's see. Let's make a table. Just have n equals 1 to 10, for example. Um, and I've written out ways of making various of these n's as differences of squares. and um, the answer uh, to the problem, yes or no. Now, for example, 2, I'm claiming here that it is not possible to write it as a difference of two squares. And you might want to just stop the video and play with it for a while and just see if you can figure out, um, if you can convince yourself that that's not true. 6 also can't be done. 10 also can't be done. So play with that if you want, or you can take it on faith that it really is impossible to, to do this. Okay. So we'd like to know... Um, is there a pattern here? And does the pattern continue? So that's another thing to do, to pause the video and see, is there a pattern in the no, the no values? Um, 2, 6, and 10. And if you can play with it for the next few if you want. Okay. So let's see. What, what is the pattern? Oops. So our guess, sorry for clicking around too much. Okay. Guess is that it seems to work unless it's a, uh, of the form 4K plus 2. And this is one thing that I'm going to talk a little bit about throughout these videos. So I'm going to use a tiny bit of um, the terminology and a tiny bit of the algebra of modular arithmetic. So saying that an n is 4k plus 2, or in other words, when you divide it by 4, you have remainder 2, is just uh, the fancy way to say that is n is congruent. That's these three equal, this triple equal sign. n is congruent to 2 mod 4. For most of these videos, that's all you need to know is that that's just a shorthand for saying it's a multiple of 4 plus 2. Okay, so let's see. Well, yeah, so 2, 6, 10. Yeah, it does seem to be periodic. The no seem to come every 4. They seem to be things that are uh, have a remainder 2 when you divide by 4. Hmm, okay. So let's look at the algebra there, okay? So we there's really two directions to go in here. There is, um, suppose that, we're, we've got a conjecture now. We've got a conjecture that whether you can 
write it as the difference of two squares is related to whether it's uh, congruent to 2 mod 4. And so you, there's two directions. If it's a difference of two squares, it seems like it's congruent to 2 mod 4. And if it's congruent to 2 mod 4, it seems like it's not, um, sorry, if, it's, if it isn't a difference of two squares, it seems like it's congruent to 2 mod 4, and vice versa. Okay, it's bidirectional. So here's what we'll do first. Let's suppose that um, n is the difference of two squares. That seems like a pretty nice thing, way to start, okay? We get some algebra that we can work on. What is that going to imply? Well, here's the, the key to almost the, pretty much the, the whole lecture, all these uh, video lectures, all this series. It's that if you take a difference of two squares, that it has a famous factorization, x minus y times x plus y. So we're factoring a polynomial, but if that polynomial, if the value of that polynomial is equal to a certain number, that gives us a factorization of that number. So it's, it's playing uh, with factorization both in algebra and, and arithmetic. So I'm just going to call x minus y a and x plus y b, just like right here. Okay. Well, let's solve those for x and y in terms of a and b. That's pretty easy to do. You just add the two equations together and divide by 2 or subtract the two equations and divide by 2. Okay. Pretty easy algebra. The easiest system of equations pretty much. Okay. So, but let's look at that. That over 2 actually turns out to be very interesting. Okay, x and y are supposed to come out to be integers. Okay, so we've got this nice factorization x minus y, x plus y. Um, that's actually saying something rather special about n that it can be factored in that way as a difference of two numbers and the sum of those same numbers. Because if we solve for those mystery numbers x and y, we discover that um, b plus a we couldn't pick those to be anything they have to be either both even or both odd, because otherwise dividing by 2 will give you an odd number. If they're both even, certainly b plus a is even. If they're both odd, then b plus a is even, similarly with b minus a. We can say that in modular arithmetic too, in terms of, but in terms of mod 2. It has to be that a and b are congruent mod 2. So what does that say? Okay, It says that we must be able to factor n into two numbers, a and b, that are either both even or both odd. That is restrictive. That does not work for any n. Because let's see what happens. If they're both even, it's going to be a multiple of 4. Because you're going to get a factor of 2 from the b and from the a. If they're both odd, then clearly n is an odd number. Okay. What does that exclude? Boom. It excludes exactly 4k plus 2. Because the odd numbers are 4k plus 1 and 4k plus 3. Multiple of 4 is 4k plus 0. And look what's left out. Okay. This is really, this is good. Okay. So this is really half of the story we'd like to show that we've assumed that n is, can be written as a difference of two squares, and we've seen now why it has to be not one of these guys that's 2 mod 4. Okay, So those no's had to show up. But what we haven't shown is the other way. Um, what if it's not 2 mod 4? What if it's not of the form n equals 4k plus 2? We'd like to reverse this argument, basically, um, to show that, yeah, really, I can find x and y to do this. And that's not too hard. Let's just do it in cases, and then we'll probably go to the next video. So let's go the other way. Okay. Um, if n is an odd number, so we're saying that it should work if n is odd or if it's a multiple of 4. So suppose n is odd. What you do is you look at these, these equations again. These are, the key, these are the key equations. Okay. And you pick the a and b in the right way. You pick them both to be odd, and then you just kind of undo what we did here. And I'll show it really explicitly. Okay, so you pick a and b, both odd, with n as the product of a and b, and let's say a is less than b so that x and y both turn out to be positive. Okay, so we just set x to be b plus a over 2 and y to be b minus a over 2. Those are integers because they're a and b are both odd. That was crucial. Okay, then let's just check it. It should work because every other thing was reversible really, but let's just check it. x squared minus y squared is this b plus a over 2 squared minus b minus a over 2 squared. We uh, foil that out a little bit, and we get this wonderful kind of cancellation. This happens so much in mathematics that so many times you, you do this. Um, b squareds cancel, the a squareds cancel, but what doesn't cancel is 2ab plus, because there's two minuses, 2ab. That's 4ab over 4 equals ab, and a whole, the whole point was we picked ab to be a factorization of n. This is a little overly complicated, really. It gives us more play than we need. We could always actually just pick a equals 1 and b equals n. If n is odd, then it's certainly the product of the two odd numbers 1 and n. And um, that's really nice because it says t take x equals n plus 1 over 2, y equals n minus 1 over 2. If you look at it, these are actually consecutive numbers. They differ by 1 half plus a half, which is 1. 
you're just taking consecutive numbers that are as near to this odd number n divided by 2 as possible. Okay, it's just n over 2 plus or minus a half is another way to say it. They're the consecutive numbers that lie right around n over 2. And then, just redoing this calculation in a slightly simpler form, x squared minus y squared, you get a fourth, and then n squared plus 2n minus 1, minus n squared minus 2n plus 1. Lots of it cancels, and you just get n. This is really a very, very complicated way to say something that every, hopefully, um, you're teaching to your elementary school children, I think that it's sort of somewhere in the curriculum, but it's really not emphasized, is that the differences of consecutive squares are exactly all the odd numbers. To create the squares, you just add consecutive odd numbers. That's another way to say it. 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, then add 7 to get 16, then add 9 to get 25. Okay? So, um, we're just saying that any odd number, sure, you can create as a difference of squares. In fact, difference of consecutive squares, if you like. Okay. Um, the other case isn't much different. If 4 divides n, then you pick a and b both to be even, to, to a, f a factorization of n where both are even. So you share at least uh, two of the twos that divide n. There might be more. Make sure that a is less than b, just to make sure everything's positive. You set x is b plus a over 2, y is b minus a over 2 again. Um, and it all works. For example, if you say a equals 2 and b equals n over 2, um, that's fine, because since n is divisible by 4, b will still be even, which is crucial for all this stuff. If you look at this and you just do a tiny bit of arithmetic, you get x equals n over 4 plus 1 and y equals n over 4 minus 1. The over 4 is legal, because 4 divides n in this assumption. These guys are 2 apart, okay? And then you just take the difference of two squares, which are not consecutive, but are just, but there's skip one in the middle, okay? And this calculation, you can just look at it if you want, but it's just saying that if you take the difference of one square with the square that's two previous in the sequence of squares, that's a way to get every possible multiple of four. It's a little bit of an extension of the fact that the consecutive squares give you, uh, difference of consecutive squares gives you all the odd numbers. Okay, so let me make a couple of notes, uh, three notes about this before we go to the next video. Let's just call n good if n is the difference of squares. And in general, it's going to be if n is x squared plus dy squared, whatever the d is that I'm particularly thinking about at the time. Okay. Um, one thing that's notable is that if m and n are good numbers, then it's not hard to see that m times n is also good. Uh, here it's probably easiest just to check the cases. We'll see an algebraic argument for that in the sum of squares case. Okay. Um, but that we can have two bad numbers whose product is good. So if you look back at the table, 2, or if you just think of the mod 4 result, 2 and 10 both have remainder 2 when you divide by 4, so they cannot be expressed as difference of squares, but their product is 20, um, and that is divisible by 4, of course, and so it, it can be expressed. So um, this is going to be something that's going to come back a lot, that if you have two ingredients that are good, their product is good, so that's going to suggest that maybe we should start, first start looking by prime numbers. And we're going to look at prime numbers a lot for this kind of thing. The other thing to note is that the pattern of the good ends is periodic. Here it has period 4. That's going to be very interesting to look for in other cases. Will it happen always? Let's see. And then the other thing is the key was factoring. But there's really two kinds of factoring. The difference of squares factoring for a polynomial. And then the fact that that told us that a number had to factor in a certain way. So it's going to be all about factoring.